Welcome to a presentation about mills in Northwest Arkansas. This presentation was prepared by the education staff at the Shiloh Museum of Ozark History, specifically for the Beaver Water District's 2020 Secchi Day. When I think of mills, um, I usually think of water mills, and therefore I've thought it was an appropriate topic to discuss when we're talking about clean water and the use of water. So usually mills harness the power of water, though sometimes they use the power of animals and later electricity or natural gas. Mills are mechanized systems for the grinding of corn into meal or wheat into flour. Mills were also used to card, spin, and weave fibers into cloth, as well as to saw wood into lumber. Millers were important too. In 1846, the state of Arkansas passed an act exempting millers from serving on juries, working on roads, and in the performance of military duty. Millers were often paid by giving them a portion of the product as a toll. The War Eagle Gristmill was originally built about 1834 by people enslaved by Sylvanus Blackburn. It washed away and was rebuilt in 1948. Um, and again, in, it burned in 1924 and was rebuilt again in 1973. A grist mill is a mill that grinds grain into mill or meal or flour. This is the Johnson Mill. A mill was built on this site as early as 1835. It burned during the Civil War. And then Jacob Q. Johnson rebuilt the mill in 1867. In 1940, it was converted to use natural gas for power. In 1978, Frank Johnson retired due to his age and the, the food production regulations. In, 19, in the 1980s, the mill became a tourist spot, and in 1991, it became part of the ongoing inn at the mill. This, Hawken, this Hawkins Mill was built in 1838 east of Huntsville by William Hawkins Sr. It cost $1,000 to build and included a sawmill, a log dam, an undershot water wheel, and French burr stones. The mill, mill was so sold soon after for $2,000. During the Civil War, the mill served as a fortress for area residents who were being attacked by bushwhackers. After the war, it became a government distillery, which turned corn into whiskey. In June of 1944, a flood washed the mill away. At Hawkins Mill in 1928, Uncle Jim Hawkins would charge one-eighth of the flour or one-tenth of the corn mill, unless he had to husk and shell the corn, in which case he his toll was one-fifth of the grain. The Marble Falls Mill was built in 1840 by Peter Beller, and in 1968, a replica was built at the now-defunct Dog Patch theme park. The original mill was torn down early in the 20th century. Um, this Hawkins Mill was built in the 1840s by James M. M. Hawkins, Sr. The toll at this Hawkins Mill was also one-eighth toll, but widows were never charged. In the 1940s, this mill was torn down. This is the inside of the rebuilt Peter Van Winkle sawmill. Um, Peter Van Winkle's mill was originally built and run by people enslaved by Peter Van Winkle. And after the Civil War, it was rebuilt and run by some of these same people. But this time, they were freedmen and they were paid for their labor. This photo shows um, is from the early 1900s. Gray's Grist Mill was built north of Prairie Grove in 1854, and William Ray bought the mill in 1859. 
It was destroyed during the Civil War, but Ray rebuilt the mill and it remained in operation until 1917. During the occupation of the Ray community, um, Miller William Ray might have shown on which side his sympathies lay. Though he sold to both armies, he charged the Confederates two and a half cents per pound for flour, while he charged the Federals double that amount. Work at the mills was hard. At Ray's Mill, the men supplying the wood to fire the boilers were paid 25 cents a day and received free flour and meal and wholesale prices at the owner's mercantile store. The mill workers had a similar deal, but they received $2 a day. This is a um, 2010 photo of Ray's Mill Millstone, which has been moved to the Prairie Grove Battlefield State Park. The Buchanan Moore Mill was built near the time of the Civil War by John Rankin Pyatt, north of Cane Hill. It was used as a grist mill, a sawmill, and a carting mill. Having different business ventures made running a mill more profitable and kept customers coming back as the needs of the community changed. In 1907, the mill was moved to property on Jordan Creek. At the time it was used, it is said that the wheel of this mill turned six times per minute. Jim, G-E-M, was a popular flour brand produced at this mill. In 1931, the mill was closed. In 1982, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. The wood portion is gone, but the stone foundation was restored in the early 1990s. And you can see it as like this today. This next slide is just a great picture in many ways of a mill. It was probably taken in the 1900, about 1900 in the Strain community. The first Ingalls mill was built before the Civil War. Abram Allen used mules to power this mill. And during the Civil War, his nephew, W.H. Ingalls, used oxen, possibly because the mules had been confiscated. Grain was ground for both armies at the mill. After the war, a new mill was built just outside of town, west of Town Branch. In 1877, it was used as a government distillery. And by 1897, the mill had new owners and plenty of wood on hand to power a steam engine, which was used to make the roller mill special blue ribbon flower. A rather unique feature of this mill was the addition of a clear story monitor, which is the roof addition um, and increased light and ventilation. In 1934, this mill was destroyed by a fire originating from a, a nearby building. The Springdale Burr Mill was located on Spring Creek in Springdale. Further up the creek on Mill Street was a woolen mill and a large flour mill. In 1925, the mill was moved to Meadow Street, but it burned down three years later and over $8,000 worth of corn was destroyed. Here's an inside picture of the Springdale Burr Mill. Here's another great picture of a grist mill near Cave Springs. It may have been built before 1880. It was torn down early in the 20th century. Moore's Mill was built about 1883 in Rag Hollow, southeast of Cincinnati. Similar to the Ingalls Mill, there is an upper portion that was added to increase light and ventilation. In 1925, the mill was torn down and the lumber was used to build a canning factory. The White River Mills was built on the West Fork of White River about 1890 when a flood washed away an earlier mill. Jersey Lily and Rose Economy were flower brands produced at this mill. It burned in the late 19-teens or the early 1920s. The Yoakum Roller Mill was built in 1894 and was steam powered. It used a plan sifter, which was a set of sieves to separate the flour into particle size. It burned in 1926. The Kingston Roller Mill was built in 1898 with partners John Grigg and Joel Bunch, 
who borrowed $1,000 to purchase machinery and lumber for the mill. Volunteers from Kingston helped haul the roller mill equipment from the Springdale Railroad Depot using eight wagons, which traveled as a parade through Huntsville, showing off to the competition. The Berryville Milling Company was built in the 1900s. In 1910, it was grinding 100 barrels of grain daily and could store 40,000 bushels of wheat and 500,000 pounds of flour. Coal fired a light plant for making electricity, and this was added in 1910. But in January of 1930, the building burned. As previously mentioned, grist mills had their own flour brands. Here is an advertisement showing the many ventures of the Fayetteville Roller Mill and the flour sack label for the Springdale Milling Company. So if you'd like to learn more about this mill uh, or water mills, you can go to the shilohmuseums.org website and look under special exhibits under the, um, the old, by the old mill stream. So thank you for joining in and we hope you have a great day. Stay safe, wear a mask. Since my photographer is socially distanced and you are viewing this virtually, I'm going to take my mask off just so that you can hear me a little less muffled. Um, and I'm talking about a mono and matate, which may be called other things in other cultures. But indigenous people, the native people of many areas, use this type of device to grind their dried foods. So um, this is just a rock that over the years and over a lot of use has gotten very smooth and kind of indented. Because with that's the matate and here's the mono, the hand part, which I would just beat my food and grind it. So a tight, they might use nuts, they might use corn, they might use wheat, other things. So here's some corn. I would put it into onto the matate, kind of bang it with the mono and grind it or rub it. I'm not gonna do that really hard because we're in the exhibit hall and I'm not allowed to have food. But once the work is done, what I would have would be cornmeal and I could make that as fine as I wanted to just by using my human hand power to grind that dried food into a powder, which then I could use to make other things, bread, tortillas, fried bread, lots of things. <laughs>